got that so far? So why should they be working for nothing that he should get paid? Well, there's a quid pro quo there. If it's a quid pro quo, why does the boy both quid? <laughs> you mean a quo quid quo? Um, well, the idea, yeah, don't you remember years ago the feud between Ed Sullivan, your old friend, and uh, Steve Allen? Right. Uh, uh, Steve Allen was getting, no, was it between? Was it between those two? Listen, I'm honey, trying to make a I've got my own troubles. I have to finish your story. <laughs> <laughs> he starts a story, I'm working for nothing. Now I, now I have to play both parts here. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Sullivan was complaining that he paid 10000 to the biggest stars, right. 7500 and 10000 Steve was getting them for nothing. For getting him for four, at that time, 300 or so, but that was the name of the game. Yeah. You see, you could create an idea. Would you put your finger up here and give us a little publicity? I, do, I don't like that cheap here. Uh, I, uh, There's a limit to how much I'm going to do for nothing. Listen. Yeah. There's a limit. I'm not going to you'll get publicity, stunts, promote your career, finish your sentences. <laughs> 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 Work for our makeup. There's a million things I have to do here. But don't you have any more intelligent questions than this, or is this the best? <laughs> I don't have any questions. I just I well, like so to bring we'll you out we'll look at each other for a couple. Of just, um, I'll tell you the truth. You have a beautiful audience. I don't mind watching them. <laughs> so, let's look how many people have nothing to do. Take a look. You want to give? <laughs> this looks like an unemployment office. Here. You want to give the the name of the theater where the show is? It's the Brooks Atkinson Theater. That's it. There you go. Right. That's what, isn't that worth right something? Away. Not only that. Your show pays money to the New York Times for an ad. That's right. All right. So they're not paying us for an ad. It's yeah, a quid pro quo. It's a quid pro quo. But why am I talking like this? <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if he walks out talking like me and I wind up talking like him? <laughs> You find that's true, that people begin talking like you, right? I find that it's amazingly true every time I meet somebody, no matter how much language they spoke before, by the time they talk to me for 10 minutes, they'll end up talking like this. <laughs> I might meet a girl from Arkansas. When I meet her, she says, hey, hey, I'm Arkansas. Hey, I'm Arkansas. Hey. 10 minutes later, she says, well, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to everybody here. Yeah. Uh, you were born in Alabama, was it? No. <laughs> I never heard of Alabama. <laughs> I don't think work? I'd have the life to walk in Alabama. <laughs> They're waiting for a Jew like me in Alabama. <laughs> Very nice down there. I have nothing against Alabama. <laughs> Look as I could keep out of the place, don't worry. So you're doing eight shows a week? Seven shows a week. I refuse to do a Wednesday matinee. Every oh. other show on Broadway has a Wednesday matinee. But I think for one man show, doing being on the stage for two and a quarter hours, to do another show like that, another two hours later, is a little too much. And I don't think the money is worth it because there's not enough money in the world. You know what I think the problem with most people are? Instead of using the money to live better, they, uh, they suffer so much for the money that they live worse. That's exactly the truth. I think that is First, you start off trying to make money so you could live better. Then you see how much money you could make, so you go right back to work. <laughs> and as soon as you find out you could make a lot of money, you never stop working to make more. The guy that can't make a living at all is a lot happier. <laughs> because, you know, that's right. If a guy stunk, even if he tried to work, if he couldn't make much money, so he doesn't care if he works or not. So if he doesn't work, what could he lose? A dollar and a quarter? <laughs> so he's happy when he's doing nothing. But if a guy is capable of making a fortune, he can't stop working. He keeps thinking of how much money he's losing by not working, so he goes right back to work. That's why the millionaires never stop working, and they suffer and struggle with their work all their lives because they can't stop working for more money. Mm -hmm. A common bum, a person who could never make a living, is a happy person because he's a man of leisure. He knows he's got nothing to lose by doing nothing. Yeah. Well, I, this uh, is the fantastic irony. The yeah. fantastic irony is that the people who could make the most money. Irony? Irony. <laughs> the people who make the most money are the most miserable and work the hardest and never enjoy life. And they can't stop working until they're too tired to work or incapable of working. Now they're 87 and they have $40 million. They'd love to enjoy their life, but they can't get off a chair. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. You probably take it a little too far. It's better to have money than not. You were poor when you were a kid, weren't you? Right, that was very So poor. you're rich. And I'm going to be poor again if I keep doing this. <laughs> I think you want rich? to take me back to where I was. <laughs> it's better to be rich, but there's a, there's a value system here that's exactly perverse to reality. People are too stupid to realize that they're always sacrificing themselves for their money instead of enjoying it. Yes, that's true. I mean, a lot of rich people don't spend time with their families, and they, they regret it later and all that. But still, there's no question that you'd rather have money than not have money. Well, but this, is, uh, this appearance on Broadway is, is much more than money. Because I know you've discussed this a million times, but... Let's assume they don't know it. There's a funny thing with your career, that you've been going strong for, what, 25 years? About that. Yeah. But, uh, and you had some controversy and this and that, but, uh, is, like, the insiders always knew you're funny, but here you are, and you're flabbergasted 
by how well received you've been. You're very modest about this. I talked to you about this in a restaurant and, uh, you know. Right. Why are you so surprised? You know you're funny. I'm not surprised that I'm funny. I'm surprised that the, the, at the huge amount of acclaim that it's suddenly getting. Uh, it's as if I'm telling you the same story for 10 years and you keep saying it's nothing. And 25 <laughs> years later, you say, why is this your story? <laughs> it's, it's the same story. Why are you suddenly discovering it like you never heard it before? I'm telling people these same type of jokes for 25 years and all of a sudden they're saying, why is this man funny? Because You know why? Because you're going to a legitimate theater. As soon as you see something legitimate theater, it becomes a work of art in your mind. And you respect it more and you wait to hear the gems come out. If you see it in a nightclub, you say, so what? I heard it before. Even if you didn't, you think you do. Besides, you're not listening. You got a girlfriend with you. You're trying to see how good you do at home. Meanwhile, he's telling you jokes. You're not really listening. You're getting turned on. You forget there's somebody there. He's bothering you. He's interrupting you. And just when you get excited, here's another joke. Who cares? <laughs> I know what you mean. But in a legitimate theater, you're not facing a girl, you're facing a stage. Right. We'll be right back with more with Jackie Mason right after this. <laughs> We're talking to Jackie Mason, and uh, who's on Broadway in the world, according to me, which is one hilarious show. Uh, you're talking about clubs and theater. You know what I was thinking of when I started at the improv right. way back? in 65 or so here in New York, uh, the people used to be eating in the front table, and there was a, wait a waitress named Lori. Well, everyone had aspirations, and no one was a waitress or a waiter. They were all in training for show business. She used to go in the ladies' room, for which you had to put paper on the knob when you go in. You know, a real <laughs> disgusting uh, corner there. And she used to put on this garter belt and a, a whole uh, costume and come out and do the Aldonza the Horse song for Man of La Mancha. <laughs> and the first table is eating a steak. She puts her foot up on the table. Born on a dung heap. Look at this kitchen wretch reeking with sweat. Aldonza the Horse. That was Jack placed. You know, <laughs> there's an odd mixture when people are doing anything but watching you. you right. know? I mean, although Cabaret has a nice tradition. Like in Second City, too, when people serve, they, they serve drinks. It's not the worst thing in the world to perform in front of In fact, a club is a lovely thing at its best, don't you think? I think it's a lovely thing, but the truth of the matter is people use a club as a place to just uh, do other things after you're an intermission for the real thing that they're out for. A guy takes a girl out and he can't make love to her as soon as he walks into the house. You can't say hello, let's make love, so you have to see a show for him. <laughs> see a show first, it's not bad. So you keep sitting there through the show, waiting for it to be over so you can get to what you want to do. <laughs> he's, he's projecting now. You're a real ladies' man. I'm a real lady. Top what, ladies. What else is there? Well, what should I go with? <laughs> what, you expect you out with furniture? Did you have to, have to go with something? I was talking to him once in the lobby of a hotel, and he's looking me straight in the eye, and suddenly he goes right past me. He goes, pardon me, are you single? A woman. <laughs> uh, you, you'll never get married, huh? Probably not. I found out there's no necessity for it. It doesn't serve any purpose in anybody's life. It's a big waste of time. The whole idea of marriage is absolutely stupid. It serves absolutely no purpose for anybody. I'm making a fortune. All of a sudden, a girl who's not working becomes my partner. I don't... <laughs> there's no other field in the world. Uh, no place on this earth could you make a fortune to somebody else by saying, I do, takes half your money. Because I do, why not? If you're making a fortune, I'll say I do too, anybody. I don't see what I need them for. Are you, are you, your uh, brothers have, and sisters have children, right? Right. You're an uncle, Jackie. Right, many times. Are you a good uncle? I'm a fantastic uncle. I don't show up. They don't bother me. <laughs> I was a good uncle, too, until I had my child. You know, I'd bounce them on my knee and then home to their parents, you know. Uh, I, don't I think children are wonderful things, but it's none of my business to be bothered with them. But not, that, not, that, uh, not that I'm a selfish person. I'm not at all selfish. But you have to know what you... 90% of the fathers in this country almost never see their children. To me, there's something very low about becoming a father and having no time for your child. The average uh, parent in this country, the average father, I should say, spends an hour and a half a week with his child. Now, this is the lowest commentary, Where the saddest commentary. This is an actual yeah. statistic. Yeah. This is an actual true statistic. They, uh, from 15 years of Yale graduates that were studied about how much time they spend with their son, with their child, and they found that uh, the average father spends an hour and a half of actual time with his kid. Now, uh, they always have perfect excuses. I would love to see my kid, but I'm busy. But every man I meet tells me how he misses his child. He'll never win him. But he yeah. always tells you how and he, he misses. spends the quality time. Yeah. With right. They quality give the time. new title for wasting <laughs> spending no time That's with their right. children is quality time. <laughs> I spend a minute and a half, but it's quality. I give him quality. <laughs> I stand in front of him. I watch him call me names, and I go. <laughs>
<laughs> They're all phonies. Nobody does this one. Somehow for a girlfriend, they always have time for cheating on the side. <laughs> they have time you for sneaking around a few man, buildings. Man. They got time. But for that kid, I almost got there. I would have liked to. I couldn't make it. They started to be bitching, bitching. They're all phonies. Because most people really, if the study was really made, they would find that most parents really don't really love their children. They love them out of guilt. They don't, mm. they love them out of guilt, but they don't really want to spend any time with them. Why do you think so many kids are on drugs all over this country? Every time a parent laments the drug problem, what he's really lamenting is the parental problem. Parents spend so little time with their kids that their kids have no outlet and they have to find outlets for their emotional, for their emotional vacuum that they're suffering. Jackie, why don't you come out of your shell and take a stand? <laughs> You know, you keep your ideas That's right. bottled up. But this uh, is a very sad commentary on our whole culture. Nobody would open a store unless he has time to take care of it. But they'll have a child that have no time for it. I agree. They have a wife and have no time for their wife. Don't get married. Don't create a marriage that you don't intend to be bothered with. Yeah. 90% of the married men cheat in America. The rest of them cheat in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know this? Why do I have to tell you everything? I'm working for these prices. <laughs> well, I agree with you. I think maybe you go a little too far when, on, on some of it, but uh, I, I think the parents probably do love well, each other. Well, I think it's own flesh and blood. Uh, it's a question of love. It could be defined in different terms. And they may love, take... Love yeah. in principle has nothing to do with it. The, the child doesn't need your love in principle. He needs your presence. You have to be there to be concerned and involved with the child. The child doesn't know you love him if you're not there. And a person who claims he loves his child but he got no time for him should drop dead. That's what I think of. I know, I know it sounds a little severe, but it's not compared severe? to what they deserve. A little severe? A little severe. It's like but, Islamic law. It's you know? nothing compared to what they deserve. It's nothing compared. They deserve more than that. Were you ever in love? Positively. <laughs> I'm in love right now. Yeah? Well, there's no other person involved, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got time for other people? You don't have any little romantic uh, 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 memory in your mind of a woman you were in love with, but it just didn't I, work I, out? I told you the truth. I don't think it's any of your business. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit how much information I have to give away for these prices. In other words, if I up the price... I was, if you up the price, I'd tell you. <laughs> Well, uh, good. Please don't get married and have children. You know what? One of the <laughs> things about today is someone can make a clear choice like that and decide not to and shouldn't. You know. Well, there's a different kind of social pressure in today's culture than there once was. There was a time that if you didn't get married, people thought you were a nut. You couldn't even get a job if you weren't married. Uh, uh, women felt very embarrassed by the thought of staying single past 22. By, right. the time, by the time they were 23, a girl would walk around nauseous if she was still single. <laughs> uh, every time she faced somebody, she said, I'm almost married, I'm trying, don't, don't, don't remind me. <laughs> oh yeah, blah, you see that guy, who's this one, who's the other one? They were always in a state of shock if they weren't married. I just now, want to tell you. We live in a much freer society where people respect your individuality to do with your life as you please and to live on your own terms. That's and that's a very healthy development. It is today's healthy culture. development, especially for someone like you, Jackie. <laughs> Uh, you made a pass on my sister years ago at the Concord. She never forgot it. That's right. Uh, I remember passing her, but making it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for You have to run over and do I your show. I don't want you to disturb too much because I have to leave you. Yeah. My show is such a big hit. I really didn't need this. But, uh, <laughs> You but, did it because you're my friend. But not only am I your friend, uh, I saw the kind of a clothes you're wearing. I knew you need help. <laughs> <laughs> I love the show, and I, I love you personally. You said, did I ever have love? You can have love for a human being. It doesn't have to be the opposite sex. And don't get too close to me, because this is the end of the friendship. This All is right. it. He's always been very nice to see me.